Hi there, my name is Neil Blevins, and this tutorial is called Reaction Diffusion in Photoshop. Reaction Diffusion is an algorithm that mimics the chemical process that's responsible for a lot of the patterns we see in the natural world. The stripes on a zebra, for example, or the spots on a cheetah or giraffe. And fish have all sorts of these patterns, plants, coral, etc. And considering how often these patterns appear in nature, it's amazing how little commercial software there is out there to create such patterns. So the chemical process works like this. You have two sets of molecules, an activator and an inhibitor. The activator travels along the surface until it meets an inhibitor, which it then tries to stop the advance by converting the activator into an inhibitor. The activator produces more of itself to fight, and the cycle continues. In small spaces, like on the skin of an animal, this system eventually reaches an equilibrium, and the result of this battle leaves a pattern behind. There's a lot of experimental software out there to make these sort of patterns in both 2D and 3D, but as I mentioned before, very little commercial software. There was a reaction filter for Photoshop released as part of the old Kai's Power Tool filters, but they were discontinued something like 20 years ago. However, I recently discovered a trick in Photoshop that lets you make reaction diffusion type patterns. It's certainly not as full featured as a dedicated piece of software, but it can make some really interesting patterns. This trick is from a person named Skybase, as he puts it, you just have to have an initial image, then apply a set of filters that cause a reaction, such as sharpen high-pass levels, edge detect, anything that brings contrast to the image. And then you have to diffuse the image, which involves a blur, a median, a min-max, um, lots of different things that can uh, diffuse. And then you repeat the process over and over again in order to get your final pattern. So you can see how this technique mimics, at least conceptually, the same sort of thing that's going on in nature. And in practice, it does manage to achieve many of the same results, at least in 2D. So using what we've learned, I've made a series of reaction diffusion Photoshop actions, and then have tried them on a number of different types of base images to achieve a variety of interesting results. Keep in mind when doing these experiments, there are a number of variables that should be considered to achieve different sorts of results. So first of all, it's the initial starting pattern. Then next is the different filters inside your actions. So changing the size of the Gaussian blur, for example, will give you very different final patterns, even with the same initial pattern. Then there's the number of iterations, which is the number of times you run the action on the image will also change the final pattern a lot. And then the resolution of your initial pattern. I did all these tests at uh, 1024 by 1024. And changing the size will change the final pattern because, for example, a 6 pixel Gaussian blur will produce a very different look on a 1K image than the same blur will produce on a 4K image. Okay, now here we are over in Photoshop, and you can see the initial image we're going to use is just a bunch of black dots on a white background. And then over here are a bunch of actions. And if you've never used actions in Photoshop before, an action is just a series of commands that you give the software in a row and then every time you hit play, it will do those actions. So um, this is all stuff you could do by hand, of course, all these different filters. But if you did by hand, you'd have to do it over and over and over again by hand. And that would take way too long. And so you create these actions to do it for you. And you'll note that there are six different actions here. And I'll show you all six of these different actions used on different uh, initial images to show you this result. So we're going to start off with a standard one here. And uh, first of all, it's going to do a high pass filter. Um, with a radius of 6 pixels. Then it's going to do a threshold uh, with the levels of 127, and that's doing the contrast portion of the image. And then it's going to do a, a Gaussian blur of 9 pixels. And then you repeat it over and over and over again. So we'll go here, and I will hit play. Okay, so that is what you get after one initial uh, run of the script. And then let's do it again. And again. And again, and we'll just keep repeating this. And you'll note that the little um, circles are growing and growing and growing. And they're starting to run into each other. And the more and more you do this, the more and more you get this reaction. And it starts looking almost like cells or fish eggs or something like that. And then you'll notice that some of them, um, some stay kind of roundish or maybe a little bit square, but then you got some other ones, like for example, this one here is starting to uh, spout out this uh, extra little tendril that's headed out in, uh, in this direction over, the, uh, over here. And after you do this a number of times, you end up with a result that looks like 
this. And so this is both the uh, initial image uh, that has been, like this is what it would look like exactly if you kept going and going and going. And then I just added a levels there to get something that's much more uh, directly black and white. So here's another one. And we're gonna use the same standard action we have over here. Uh, but this time there's a lot more space in between the dots. And this is gonna create a very different sort of pattern. So let us start. So to begin with, it starts going at, uh, doing basically the same thing that it did last time, except you'll notice those two kind of in the lower right, uh, they were a little bit closer to each other. And so they're gonna bang into each other first, but the other ones have a lot more room in order to grow. And that's gonna create that very different pattern. And then just so you're not bored watching me hit this over and over and over again. This is not a very fast computer, by the way. This is my laptop, so that's why it's taking a little bit longer. If you have a faster computer, this will be a much faster process. But let's just uh, speed it up uh, for the next little bit, and you can see it as it grows. And uh, then I'll be back after we get it a little bit closer to the end. Okay, we're back. And uh, just to show you what the end result is with some contrast, there you go. So just having a very similar image, but just a little bit different in terms of the spacing on stuff created a very different final result. And this one definitely looks like some sort of uh, coral pattern or maybe some stripes on some sort of animal. Speaking of animals, this is a very different initial image. So instead of just some dots, this is a contrasty black and white photo of an actual tiger. And if we do it on this, you'll see that you immediately get some pretty interesting results right off the bat without having to even do it all that often because we just had a lot more detail um, in the initial image. And then like any good cooking show, here is the end result. So here's a couple of other examples. And uh, in this one, I won't show you the process. I'll just jump to the final result. So what if you have one single dot and after doing it a bunch of times, you actually end up with a pattern like this. And then let's look at a similar one, which is also a dot, but in this case, the dot is actually a little bit taller than it is wide. And you can see the result that that gives you when you uh, diffuse it all the way out. So it has some similarities to this one, but again, a very different pattern because of that initial image. And then this one is a bunch of lines. And if you do it to this one, this is the result you end up getting. So you still have some of those lines in there, but then you have this squiggly stuff in between the lines. And then this one here is again, lines going horizontally, except they're much blurrier than in the first one. And the final result is something like this. So now let's move over to this one here, which is called soft. And the main difference here is that the high pass filter is slightly bigger. So it's 10 pixels. And then the Gaussian blur is 20 pixels instead of uh, the nine pixels that it was here. So the results on this, this is the same image that I started the whole thing with. And you'll remember that when I used the um, standard filter, I got this uh, on this image. And then on this one, uh, once I do the soft filter, I end up with this. So you'll notice it re seems to react a lot less uh, and the pattern seems to be a lot bigger. And that's what the, uh, the soft one seems to do is it makes all the patterns a lot bigger. So another example is this guy here, you'll remember the single dot in the center. And uh, when you use this on that single dot, you end up with this. So there's a lot less detail in this pattern. So if you want something that has less detail to it, um, the soft one might be the way to go. So now let's try the one called directional. And you can probably guess what this one does. Instead of just the high pass threshold and Gaussian blur, it also does a motion blur there. In this case, 70 pixels going side to side. So if we try that on here, creates this bizarre moray pattern at the beginning, and then it ends up pulling it sideways into these stripes. 
And you can see how at the edges you get these slightly different patterns, and that is because in those spots it doesn't have the full stripe. It's sort of a part stripe that's caught on the edges, and so you get these sort of weird sand dune type patterns. And then here it is after a whole bunch uh, more iterations. So the fourth one is called small, and the main difference here is that instead of nine pixels Gaussian blur, it does a two pixel. And the result is much more intricate results. So if you run it a bunch of times, you end up with something that looks like this. The second to last action is this one here, which is directional small. So it's sort of a combination of the small one and the directional, where it uh, doesn't uh, blur a whole lot, but it also does a much smaller uh, motion blur in this direction. And for this one, I tried this pattern here. Where I put a lot of detail on one side, but not on the other side. And I figured what it would do is kind of grow these details out in this direction. And sure enough, after you run it a bunch of times, you get something that looks like this, where you end up again with a sort of sand dunes type pattern, except you got a lot more detail here, and then it goes off to regular straight horizontal lines over here. And then the final one is called spin. And this one, instead of doing a uh, motion blur in a particular direction, it's doing a radial blur, which spins stuff around. So on this one, you can see, if we run this a few times, we start off with something that kind of looks like our initial image uh, from the standard, but the stuff around the edges ends up uh, merging together because of the spinning effect. And the spin happens less at the center than it does at the edges, and so that's why you're seeing these different results depending on where in the image you are. And if you want to jump ahead, this is what I got after a whole bunch of iterations. Of course this Photoshop trick has some limitations, and so I'd still love to see some dedicated software to these sorts of techniques. Real reaction diffusion simulations have far more options and variables to get an even wider variety of patterns. But it's still pretty cool the amount of variation you can get with this one simple Photoshop trick. So give it a shot yourself. I'm going to be including all of the actions uh, in the description of this video so you can play with them, you can edit them, you can add your own filters into them. And if you get some cool results with some uh, initial images using your own uh, variations of these filters, please share them because I would love to see them. So thanks for watching. I hope you found this interesting. And again, really recommend trying this yourself. You'll end up wasting a whole afternoon, but it'll be so much fun that it'll be worth it. And if you want more art-related tutorials, including videos and written tutorials, feel free to go to neilblevins.com and go to the Art Lesson section. Or feel free to subscribe if you want to be notified the next time I update my YouTube channel. Thank you very much.